us. Uh, we are so blessed to have you uh, joining us for our online Bible study tonight. Make sure to post in the comments and let us know that you're here. Um, and uh, I already posted the reflection questions. Like last week, we'll be having that at the end of every chapter that we're discussing uh, for this book study. Uh, so these reflection questions are going to be something that if you are willing to, I'd love to see you post in the comments uh, and let us know your thoughts. Um, and uh, we'll be going through those at the end, obviously. Um, and so we are so excited to continue on in this book study. Um, and so before we even get into it, I'm just going to pray real quick and just ask God to uh, work through uh, this night and work through this study. Dear God, we thank you so much for this time. We just ask that uh, even in the short amount of time that you would use this uh, to uh, encourage us to um, uh, to continually renew our minds in your word uh, so we're not just thinking our, our own thoughts or being guided by our flesh, but that we're being guided by your Holy Spirit, and that's what this whole study is about. Father God, I pray that we would uh, just be able to look at the progress made in our lives, uh, not through willpower, not through self-determination, but only through uh, your Holy Spirit, God. We can't do it without you. Uh, and we literally need a relationship with you in, in order to get through this crazy world. And Lord, I just pray that that relationship would be um, full of life and that we'd be able to see, um, uh, to be able to bear fruit in our lives because of that relationship. Lord, every area that is uh, dead and dying, uh, every area that is um, dark and hopeless um, in this world and in our personal lives, God, right now I just declare in the name of Jesus for um, new life, for new hope, and for restoration. God, we thank you so much for this day. We just ask you would bless us, you would keep us close to your heart and uh, uh, close to your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So last week we started off talking about this uh, study uh, going through this book that I've written called The Overflow. And in the introduction, we talked about um, three areas uh, uh, that we can currently, you know, be in, in, in our life and in, uh, in how we are living. Um, and the first area is fully flesh. We were talking about when we are guided by our flesh, uh, all of our personal desires. We have no conviction of the Holy Spirit. Um, we are only guided by what we feel and what we think. Um, and we don't really have any outside influence as far as um, um, the Bible or the Holy Spirit or looking at the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, the other area we're talking about, which many people in the church struggle with, which is being lukewarm. Uh, that means you're going through the motions. You're not on fire. Um, you know, as the passage says uh, in Revelations, it says you're not hot, you're not cold. And Jesus said, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth, which is such a graphic illustration. But he's saying that because if you're not hot and you're not cold, then you're serving no purpose. Um, and, and so, you know, we were talking about the reality of the fact that being lukewarm and going through the motions and claiming to be Christian or a churchgoer um, or even just going on Christmas and Easter, um, th those things are not going to add value to your life. It's just something that you put as your uh, status on Facebook or, or your, your profile that, oh, I'm a Christian, uh, but it has has no bearing or no effects on your life. And obviously, that's not fruitful. That's not going to be changing the world around you. And most importantly, that's not going to be changing you from within if you are in that lukewarm state. Um, and uh, we need to uh, always evaluate where we're at. And sometimes we can drift, but that's the amazing thing about God's grace is he sees you where you're at and says, it's okay, I'm here for you. Now, how can we get you to where you need to be? And God does it. God loves you exactly where you're at, but he loves you too much to keep you where you're at. And that's what this is all about, that we would grow into what he's created us to be. Uh, and then the last area that we talked about, um, uh, you know, as far as these three categories, we talked about being uh, full of the Holy Spirit uh, and the reality of the, the early church and the, the apostles, the disciples, and, and how when the Holy Spirit broke, out and people that were uneducated, uneducated fishermen, people that were just, you know, ordinary dudes, and they were able to speak in power and authority because the Holy Spirit was living in them, and people were astonished, and, and thousands of people came to know Jesus Christ. And, and you know, we're not saying that uh, that has to be the exact situation in your life, but we are saying that there is a visible difference when we are full of the Holy Spirit. And then we talked about how the fact that we need to look for that evidence. We can't just say, oh, I'm spirit-filled and I'm, 
you know, spirit driven. I'm ready to go. But then there's no effects on your life. We need to look for evidence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Uh, And we talked about uh, some key areas. We talked about um, boldness, like I said, uh, with the, uh, the, um, um, with Peter, uh, when he was speaking, he spoke in boldness that they recognized he was bold and he had, uh, they also recognized him as somebody who had been with Jesus. Are people looking at our lives and seeing boldness? Are people looking at our lives and seeing that we have dedicated personal alone one-on-one time with Jesus Christ? We need to evaluate that, and we need to uh, take a look at our lives. Roberta, so glad to see you. Matt, how you doing? Pearl, good evening. Autumn, how you doing? Good to see you all joining in. Very excited that you're here. Um, You know, it's uh, being a pastor and uh, doing a lot of multimedia stuff and having ADHD is just phenomenal because I'm looking at my phone trying to like skim through notes and then also scanning the iPad for comments and then also looking directly into a camera and not trying to hit my face off the mic. Anyway, you guys, you know, you don't care about that. But anyway, um, uh, and then the, so we said boldness, uh, one of the areas for evidence, boldness, the other area, supernatural, that our weaknesses would become God's strength. We look all through the Bible, and we see people that looked, if we would have looked through the church and said, who's qualified to do ministry here? And these people were the ones that were not qualified. They were weak, and they, were, uh, they weren't ready to do something powerful for God. But God chose them and said, in spite of your weakness, I will give you my strength. And so that way, it's not something that you can boast about, that you did something amazing, but it's about something amazing that I am going to do through you. And so supernatural, uh, that our weakness would become God's strength. Uh, and then the, the last area, um, that it amplifies your spiritual gift. We believe that when you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, that every believer is given the Holy Spirit. And when we're given the Holy Spirit, we are given gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Some have multiple gifts, but everyone is at least given one gift. And how that manifests in your life is is different for everybody. So, you know, you might have, uh, you know, certain gifts uh, in speaking and maybe you uh, could be able to preach or maybe your speaking gift would be going to speak to children in, in children's ministry. For everyone, it's not a cookie cutter thing, but whatever your gifts are, one, you know, I just preached a couple of weeks ago, use your gift, use your gift. I said it like a hundred times in my message because it's so important. Are you currently using your gifts? If not, I encourage you, look for a way and, you know, make sure, message me, message the church, message uh, Pastor Dennis Gray. If there's an area that you're currently not using your gift, I encourage you to look for an area to use your gift. If you need disciple in that, that's what we're here for. That's why we are the church. That's why we are the body of Christ. And uh, if you currently are using your gifts, my encouragement to you would be that you would uh, step into an area where you are uncomfortable, that you would be able to say, you know what, I'm not comfortable in my, I am very comfortable in my gift. I know that I am using it, but how can I use it more? How can I use my gifts in a, a, a stronger way? How can I grow in this gift in a way I haven't grown before? Um, as a preacher, as uh, somebody who's speaking from the pulpit, uh, I constantly go back, and, and at Sunday after I preach, I'll always go back and I'll listen to the message um, and then go back through and, and take notes and think about, okay, how could I have gone about this in, in doing my sermon outline? How could I go? You know, I want to always be growing. Not that I'm, you know, being overcritical because I believe that the Holy Spirit speaks through, um, you know, a minister uh, who's somebody who is is dedicating their life and and submitting to the Holy Spirit in that moment. Uh, There are certain things that, you know, that God is able to use no matter what. But as people who are given gifts, we are also called to be good stewards of those gifts. And so we need to constantly evaluate and think of ways that we can grow and be stronger. And, And again, you can't do it without the Holy Spirit. So that's why we need to pray and ask God, reveal to me, how can I be growing in this area? Area. And so we, last week, like I said, we went through the intro. Uh, we also talked about um, looking for evidence. And today we're going to be looking at chapter two. Uh, and, and the title is, Why Do I Need the Overflow? Why do I need the overflow? Just check the comments again. Uh, why do I need the overflow? It, it's such an important thing because, you know, 
sometimes we mysticize and we look at these people in the Bible and we think, wow, this is, you know, they did this powerful thing and uh, they're just almost become these uh, uh, fairy tale stories in the Bible. And we think about, you know, all the powerful things that were done and we think, oh, you know, that, that's just a Bible story. That's a fairy tale. That's, you know, that's kind of in my mind, that category that God did those awesome things back then. But, you know, right now it's just kind of low key and we just lead somebody to Christ. And then, you know, we hope there's a little bit of change in their life and, you know, hope they tithe their 10%. And, and no, 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 no. That is not what it is about. We literally need the Holy Spirit to overflow, overflow in our lives. It affects us. It affects the world around us. And it affects the way we have our relationship with God our Father. It gives us more intimacy with God. And I'm going to get ahead of myself. But it's so important. And so we're going to take a look at why, we, uh, why I need the overflow in my life. And so there's this quote uh, from uh, St. Augustine, um, a lot of wisdom in, in his writings. He's, he's just, if you look through, just go to Google and type in St. Augustine quotes, you'll see a lot of brilliant stuff that'll kind of bend your mind a little bit. But this is something very powerful that he said, and we have it up on the screen for you as well. It says, without the spirit, we can neither love God nor keep his commandments. I'll say that again, without the spirit... We can neither love God nor keep his commandments. I love how he first says that we can neither love God and then he says nor, nor keep his commandments because without the spirit, we can't have that supernatural, uh, powerful intimacy with God. We literally need the Holy Spirit to be able to have that deep, loving intimacy because that is the connecting point. Uh, and, and we are so blessed to be able to have the Holy Spirit, but we need to access that's already there. The Holy Spirit, if you are in a relationship with Jesus Christ, we have access to the Holy Spirit, but you need to make the decision to seek out the Holy Spirit uh, and then to, to keep his commandments. You know, obviously, if you are in a relationship and you love that person, you are going to do your best to, um, you know, not do something that would be... Um, you know, inappropriate or something that would be uh, hurtful to them, uh, something that would be in spite of them, you know, and we look at this relationship with God and it's not like follow the commandments and then love God. It's like, no, as you love God, again, the overflow of that would be that we follow his commandments. And, and the whole thing with that St. Augustine quote, it says, without the spirit, we can do neither of those things. Such a powerful thought. And so, um, we, we need to think about why we need the overflow in our lives. Uh, we need to think about giving God glory with all of our lives, not just on Sunday morning. I want to say that again. We need to think about giving God glory with all of our lives, dedicating our whole lives to God, not just on Sunday morning. Because sometimes we can put God in a box for Sunday mornings. And for some of you who are extra spiritual, like my friends here tonight joining me um, for Wednesday night, it'll be Sunday night or Sunday morning and Wednesday night. And that's the only box I'm gonna put them in. But no, God is supposed to be over your whole life. We need to give him our whole lives. And so we need to think about that, how we can dedicate and giving God glory with all of our lives. And um, God does not work um, on a point system. It's, it's not something like that, like I was saying, it, it's not about uh, doing these commandments or doing these works. God does not, you can't earn God's favor. And that's where we have this passage in Ephesians 2.9. It says, salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So no, uh, so sorry, I'm thinking of different translations. So none of us can boast about it. You know, and different translations will say, so no man can boast. You know, it, it's, it's not something that we get because we've earned it. It's literally a gift from God. Um, and, and so we need to think about that. The fact that, you know, salvation is a reward for the, not for the good things we've done, uh, so no man can boast. It's not something we've earned. It's a gift from God. And so we need to think about how that is going to look in our lives. Um, and, and we need to uh, uh, take a look at this uh, next quote, um, I believe. Let me just double check. Yep. Um, th this is a snippet, a uh, small section from uh, something that I was writing in this book. And it says, uh, when we understand that our good deeds are not to earn favor with God, then we start to see that those deeds are an overflow of our hearts because of our love for God. 
when we are stuck in a religious mindset, it is extremely difficult to see why we need the overflow in our lives. So when we're in that religious mindset, we can get stuck in thinking, well, I have to do X, Y, and Z to go to heaven. And no, it's the only way unto heaven, the only, as the Bible says, the only way unto the Father is through the Son. That is the only way. It is through salvation alone, by God's grace that is given to us, is the only way into heaven, through a relationship with Jesus. And so when we think about that, the more we are focused on the religious mindset of works and do this and do this in order to, uh, to get God's love or to think we have to earn our way into heaven, then we think that why should I have to experience God's Holy Spirit when I can just earn my way in? Uh, and, and the reality is, is we're not, as Christians, let me, let me rephrase this, as Christians, we are not just trying to... Uh, get salvation and live the rest of our lives and die and go to heaven. That is not what it's about. It's about bringing the kingdom of God here on earth as well. We are supposed to be conduits of God's love and God's grace, and we cannot do that without the Holy Spirit. And we literally, and I keep saying this, and I know I probably sound redundant, but we literally need the Holy Spirit in our lives to do that. We cannot do it on our own. We need the Holy Spirit to help us achieve that. And so I want you to think about that. Why do you need the Holy Spirit in your life? Why do you need the overflow of the Holy Spirit in your life? There's so many different areas. There's so many different people that need to experience God's love, God's grace, and most importantly, or one of the most important things, God's word. And as we are good stewards of our relationship with Jesus Christ, through that relationship, we build time in prayer, we build time in worship, but we also build time in the word. Because how can we build a relationship getting to know Jesus Christ without reading his word? Because when we read the Bible, we read through the New Testament, we read through uh, the, the whole Bible, we can see who Jesus actually is, not who we think he was, not who we think he is, but who Jesus actually is. And so when you think about that, as we build it in, like I said, prayer, worship, and time in God's word, when the overflow of the Holy Spirit is coming through us, we are able to reach people. And you know, that there, there's that uh, quote uh, that sometimes we're the only Bible someone will ever read well, you know, we can actually share wisdom from God's word with people. And especially when you read through, and I'm going to get on a little bit of a tangent, but you know, whatever. Um, uh, when you read through God's word, especially in the book of Proverbs, there is so much wisdom. I've shared quotes from the book of Proverbs with atheists and agnostics. Um, and they're like, wow, that's really wise. I'm like, yeah, it's from God's word. What up? You know, um, and it, it's so important. And God's word it is such an important, uh, valuable um, piece to what we are doing in our lives, in our relationship uh, with Jesus Christ and that overflow. Um, and another, uh, another quick story. I remember one time I was at a uh, skate park when I was living in uh, Lancaster area. And there was this kid about to get in a fight with another kid and they were, you know, yelling back and forth at each other, cussing and getting crazy. And I remember I was talking to this one kid and I was like, dude, just delete, you know, I know he's being ignorant. I know he's being crazy, but, you know, to respond to a fool makes you a fool. And he's like, wow, where, that's really smart. Where did you get that? And I'm like, the Bible, bro. You know, like it, it, there, there's so much truth that can be applied. Again, as we, we continue to build that relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, then we are able to, um, to be able to share, you know, the overflow of God's love, grace, mercy, and his wisdom from his word. Um, and so we're going to take a look at three areas that show why we need the overflow in our lives. Uh, and the first area is joy. In Philippians 4.4, uh, 4, Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. I love that he needs to reiterate that and state that fact again that, you know, or state that point again, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And there's that exclamation point. So you got to emphasize it. Um, but you know, it, it's so important. Joy is, is, is something that is often misunderstood by many people. I feel, um, because we get mixed up between, uh, joy 
and happiness. Happiness is something that is based on our circumstances. So I'm walking down the street, I find ten dollars, woo, I'm happy. And then you know, uh, I, I uh, you know, I, I trip over uh, a crack in the sidewalk, hit my face, oh, I'm sad now. You know, there's there's circumstances that lead up to those certain feelings. Happiness is is based on our circumstances. But joy, when we read through the biblical context of joy. It is in spite of our circumstances. As Paul writes from a prison cell about joy, it's not because he's like, no, this is like a five-star hotel. I don't, you know, there's no rats in here. I'm not sitting in, a, you know, basically in a sewage area. Um, you know, he, he's writing about joy from a prison cell. And this isn't like it is today, not saying that prison cells are glorious or great right now, but back then it was just barbaric. Uh, and so you got to realize that when, when he's writing about joy and other people throughout the Bible are writing about joy, it's in spite of our circumstances that we find joy. And we find joy in Jesus Christ. And so we need to think about that. In the world we live in today, why we need the overflow, why we need joy in our lives because when we look at a world that is full of chaos and fighting and, you know, it feels like every day you turn on the news, something else crazy happened. Um, we need that joy because in spite of what's going on in the world, that we can have joy, then people will see us and say, how, where is this source of joy coming from? How are you happy? And like, I'm, trust me, I'm not happy with what's going on in the world, but I do have joy. And that's because I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then we also have that inner peace, which is what we're talking about next. The next thing, uh, the three areas that show why we need the overflow in our lives. Number two is peace. Uh, in John 16, it says, I have told you these things so that you may have peace in me. I love this. He says, in this world, you will have, me- uh, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. In different translations, that's why I always get caught up because I read so many different translations and the wording's always a little bit different. But it says, um, you know, he says, in this world, you have many troubles. This is what Jesus is saying to the disciples. In this world, you have many troubles. Can we relate to that? You better believe it. We can relate to that. It is such an important thing that we look at the fact that the Bible is not written for a specific time, for a specific season. The Bible was written to encourage believers uh, in, until Jesus returns, that we are all in the body of Christ supposed to be encouraged by the words of these scriptures that are God-breathing, God-inspired. And so, like I said, uh, or technically like Jesus said, um, in this world, you will have many troubles. And he says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And so and he says that so that you may have peace in me, so that you have peace in Jesus Christ. Again, when you are looking at what's going on in the world, it's crazy. So the fact that you can have joy is something that is going to stand out in, in crazy ways. You're going to look like a, uh, <laughs> a strobe light in the midst of a, a dark night. You're going to look like, uh, you know, a, just a crazy big light in, in this world right now because you're going to have joy. And the fact that you have peace, you know, there's a lot of people are trying to find, you know, this Zen meditation and, you know, in which, you know, there is biblical meditation, you know, meditating on God's word and, and focusing our thoughts in on him. Um, but, you know, uh, this zenness and, and uh, the, you know, meditation a lot of times is trying to get your mind to blankness, that you have nothing. Uh, but when we are meditating, when we are trying to seek peace, it is because we are trying to clear our mind of everything but God's word. And when we clear out all the rubble, we clear out all the chaos, and we leave room just for God's word and God's truth, then we're able to find peace that passes all understanding, just like God's word said. Uh, and, and so we need to think about that, how we can have peace in the midst of chaos, that it feels like the world is on fire around us. In my book, um, I'm not sure I'll be able to have it, but there's this meme, it's a picture from this like cartoon where it's this like, uh, dog character, and he's sitting in a room, and like the whole room around him is on fire, and then it just says, I'm fine. <laughs> like, you know, that's kind of what we need to be. Like the world around us is on fire, but we can sit there with peace, with joy, and say that, you know what, I am okay. Not because of what's going on, but because of who is inside of me, that Jesus Christ is my Savior, and we can be so blessed to, to share in that, uh, that peace and that joy. 
And like I said, tonight's going to be a little bit shorter, so we'll get on to the final point, and then we'll talk about the reflection questions. Um, and, and this last uh, um, area that shows why we need the overflow in our life is confident hope. Confident hope. And I love this. In Romans 5, uh, verses 3 through 4, it says, um, Paul is speaking here. He says, uh, not, on, uh, not only so, but we also... but." Huh? Okay, sorry, I'm not the greatest reader. Uh, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, uh, (laughs) perseverance, character, and character hope. You know, when we look at the suffering, the chaos, the, the, you know, all these situations going on in the world, we need to stand out and understand that we can either allow the, you know, the travesties, these chaos, all this stuff going on, we can either allow it to break us or we can allow it to be used in light of God's amazing grace to be able to build us up in our character and our development. That's what he says, you know, um, suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. That is something we all need to hold tight to. That is something we all need to understand, that we can either let uh, our our suffering break us or we can allow it build character and build hope and build us into better people along the way. But it's a choice that you need to make. So I want you to think about that. And as we uh, prepare to close, we're going to look at these, uh, um, these reflection questions. And the, the first question, why do you need an overflow life? Why do you need an overflow life? This is something that's going to be personal to you, and if you feel like putting in the comments, then that's great. And if you don't, I would still encourage you, if you, you know, if you got your phone, go ahead and then click on that, because uh, I already have it in the comments. Click on it, copy and paste it into your notes on your phone, write it down uh, somewhere, and, and I want you to go and write this down, actually answer these questions, because I want, as we go through this whole entire book, is about reflection, uh, about self-evaluation, uh, and about taking that self-evaluation and not just looking at it like it's some type of data, but looking at it as something that we can grow upon, something that we can um, be building our uh, um, building our relationship stronger with God uh, and with uh, Jesus Christ. And so, uh, again, why do I need an overflow? life. You know, I, I, for, I know for me, um, life is just miserable without that reassurance of the Holy Spirit moving in my life, without joy, without peace, without not just hope, but as that passage in Romans, what the whole book is about, about confident hope, that we have access to confident hope through the power of and the overflow of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So think about that. Why do you need an overflow of life? Uh, number two, what area would you like to see more joy in your life? What area would you like to see more joy in your life? I know for me, sometimes with my job, um, I, I'm a supervisor, and I've got about like 17 or so employees, um, and I've got like a couple of them who are like super cool, and then I've got a bunch who are just like mad difficult and frustrating people. <laughs> um, and sometimes I think that I allow that, those situations that come from those people. Uh, and I'm just trying to be honest with you guys because, you know, I'm not going to sit up here and just try to be fake. Um, but I know I let those situations when I get frustrated uh, to break me instead of build me. And so as we're going through, you know, this book has been written over a period of like three years. Um, and the final chapter is still kind of like being tightened up. And then I have to go back through and do the whole thing again uh, just to make sure to get everything, you know, um, to where it needs to be. But as I'm going back through and, and making the study for this and reading back over it and adding some new sections, I'm so convicted that I need to grow in so many of these areas. And I think we should always be willing to grow and always acknowledge that we need to grow um, because no one's perfect. But anyway, I, like I was saying, I, I let those situations when I get frustrated, I let them break me down. And I know that I uh, I should be bringing in a sense of, a, a sense of joy into the world around me. I should be bringing the overflow of the Holy Spirit into the departments that I'm running. Uh, even if I'm not able to preach the word at work, but I should still be able to, people should be able to sense that 
I have a relationship with God. And like that passage in, in the book of Acts that, you know, when Peter was speaking and the Holy Spirit was um, overflowing in his life as he was speaking and 3,000 people came to Christ, that, the, that they were astonished by his boldness, but also that he was with Jesus. People should be able to look at my life and say, oh man, that's someone who spends time with Jesus. And so think about that and go ahead and respond in the, in the uh, comments um, and we can, uh, uh, I'll try to respond to them uh, after the study as well. Um, and then number three, what, area, uh, what areas would you like to see more peace in your life? Um, there, there's, there's so much chaos. I know I keep talking about that, but I mean, it's the year 2020. So <laughs> what else is there to talk about? <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, what area would you like to have peace in your life? Maybe there are certain situations. Maybe it's the job uncertainty. Maybe you're currently laid off and you're stressed out and you're frustrated and you're overwhelmed, but you know that you have access to peace if you submit to God. And so, you know, that's just a random example. Um, you know, maybe there's stuff going on in your family situations. Maybe there's certain things going on that when it feels like there is just a storm, completely a whirlwind going on around you, but you want to, you know, just like Jesus, when he fell asleep in the boat and there was a storm and everyone's freaking out. And then he just says, like, be still, you know, and he just has the storm calm down and, you know, just peace falls over the waters, you know. But that could be the same situation in your life. You know, if there's chaos, if there's just uh, uh, situations, it feels like there's just a whirlwind of storms and, and you're on this crazy rocking boat and water's coming on and you're taking on water. Don't forget, just like the disciples, they had pretty much forgot the fact that Jesus was asleep on the boat, that Jesus was with them. Don't forget that Jesus is also with you. And so don't forget to access Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you to speak peace into my life, to speak calm to the storm. You have access to that. And I pray that you would um, be obedient to uh, following through on that relationship and, and, and seeing God work miracles and move mountains in your life sorry i'm like preaching sermons in between each point um then number four what areas would you like to see confident hope in your life um as we look through all these different things that are going on uh in the world um in our in our lives um you know, each of us has a different situation. Each of us has a unique set of circumstances, uh, and some maybe not so unique in this time. Some uh, there's so many people who can relate to each other because of what's going on all around the world with this virus uh, that we are actually a lot more relatable to each other than we've probably ever been. Uh, but sometimes there are you know unique circumstances, unique situations. Where do you need to have hope? Thinking about something that looks like it's it's there's there's no future, that something is dead or dying in your life, but you need hope. You need reassurance. What is that area? And think about that. I want you to write all of these areas down and then put that into practice this week. Think about how you can grow and how you can see God move in your life. And so... Um, I just want to take a quick look here. Sorry. Um, and so a as we wrap up, you know, like I said, um, the, the first chapter last week we were talking about uh, what does the overflow life look like? We we're talking about evidence. This week we're talking about um, why do we need an overflow life? We've talked about joy, peace, and confident hope. And next week, I pray that you will tune in with us. Uh, make sure to share, um, tag your friends, uh, comment, share, you know, make sure to, to get other people involved because uh, it's a lot more fun when there's uh, comments rolling through and we can uh, kind of correspond back and forth afterwards. But next week, chapter three is going to be uh, how will an overflow life affect the world around me? Super excited for what uh, God has in store for that lesson. Um, and if you are leaving anything in the comments, my iPad basically just died, so I can't really get to it right now, but I will make sure to respond in the comments. We are so blessed and so thankful that you are joining us. Like I said last week, we it, it is so amazing to know that we have this uh, extended family online, that you are a part of our um, online congregation. Uh, and for some of you, this is your only way to be able to uh, experience church right now, maybe through medical issues. And uh, some of you are just in a different area. But we are so thankful. We are so blessed um, that you're joining us. And don't forget, Sunday morning at 11 a.m., uh, we usually start our live stream about 10 minutes before the service. Uh, so make sure to join in, click share, uh, like, comment, 
let us know that you're there. Um, and I'm usually monitoring uh, the comments as well. So I'll try to respond to you uh, as quickly as possible during the Sunday morning service. Uh, we are so blessed, so thankful that you have chosen to spend time with us tonight for this Bible study. Uh, so I'm going to pray and then we are going to close out and then we will see you Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that you are the God that fixes broken things, uh, that that you are the God uh, that uh, is able to speak uh, peace and joy and confident hope into our lives, uh, that no situation is too far gone, no person is too far gone, that you are the God of impossible things. Uh, and God, I just pray for anyone who feels like they are that uh, that person in the boat that is just uh, experiencing a storm right now, uh, that they would trust you enough to, um, to, to communicate with you and say, God, I believe that you have the power. I believe that you have the strength. I believe that you can do anything. And so I, I just, I just pray that they would be able to be bold. And just as they asked Jesus to, uh, to calm the storm, that he would be able to speak calmness and, and to, uh, speak peace over their lives. Um, and Lord, I just thank you so much that the, the Holy Spirit, um, it is alive and moving in our generation uh, that there is, uh, you know, this generation is not hopeless, but that you are moving in ways that um, that people may not be seeing right now. But God, I pray that there would be uh, an uprising in our generation of people that are full of the Holy Spirit, full of your truth, full of your hope, Lord. I just pray that you would be able to guide us into uh, a more intimate relationship with you, a more intimate time in your word, uh, in worship and prayer. Uh, and God, I just pray that you would use us uh, in ways we could have never imagined. Lord, we thank you for this day. We just ask that you would bless us. You would keep us safe. Lord, we're praying for safety and healing in the name of Jesus, uh, especially in the midst of this virus, God. Um, I just pray that you would keep us safe, keep us close to you, uh, and keep us close to your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much. God bless, and you have a great night.